easy for you now You got two minutes of my time Even if you had a terrible start to this year, saying that, oh my gosh, two weeks of the year down the garbage, I might as well just throw the whole year down the garbage, that is the most ridiculous thing you could possibly think of. So wherever you're at, however the year started for you, stay positive, stay optimistic, and that would be a great story to say, hey, January was terrible. The new year started terrible. And look at me now, in December, I'm having the best time, I've grown, I've evolved, and everything is better. Hello, welcome back to the Rachel and Pretzel YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about four movement-based health habits for 2024. Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, health habit number one is going to be getting in daily movement. Typically, the easiest way to do this is to literally just get your steps every single day. I found that for myself personally, when I'm powerlifting, when I'm lifting heavy, the more I move throughout the day, because it's so easy, like everyone walks during the day, just walk a little bit more, my joints feel healthier, my body feels heavier, healthier, my muscles feel healthier, everything feels less achy if I have something weird that pops up, as long as I stay moving and get blood flow to the area, it feels a lot better. So a very, very simple change you can make to your day, it just move a little bit more regardless of whatever your training styles are. And also I feel like a lot of people really underestimate the importance of steps for maintaining good body composition. You don't have to go on super, super high intensity runs. You don't have to do high intensity Stairmaster swimming, anything like that. Although if you have cardiovascular goals, that is great for your health. However, it's not necessary. <laughs> and like I said, I feel way, way better when I'm in the 10 to 12,000 step range than when previously, when I first started powerlifting, I was only at like the 6,000 steps per day range. Granted, if it's a day where I'm like, really needing the extra recovery, I will be a little flexible with manipulating it. But there's lots of really simple, sorry, I dropped my headphone. Um, anyways, there's lots of like really, really simple ways to increase your movement throughout the day. For example, I'm a teacher and on days where I'm feeling like, you know what, I don't really want to circulate the room that much. I kind of just want to sit at my standing desk stay up here, my headphone keeps on slipping. I can end the workday only at around 3,000 steps versus if I'm moving, if I'm going, I'm just going to take these out. <laughs> if I'm like walking across campus throughout the day, if I'm walking around throughout my lessons, all in the day, even just the workday, not even going on a walk or anything, I'll be at 7,000. So then I only have 3,000 steps to get up to the 10,000 range. So really really easy make simple changes park a lot further in the back of the parking lot if you don't have an active job still circulate as much as you can throughout the day on your breaks it will add up it will make you feel better if weight loss is a goal it will help you lose weight just in general walk all right i just got back from work and it is a rest day so speaking of walks rest days are the day that i take extra long walks with my puppy so i'm gonna get changed and then i'll talk about health habit number two all right one thing i forgot to mention in regards to walking the importance of it is to reduce rigidity in the body or not just walking but any fluid motion whether it's jump roping or running or something like that just non-weighted movement pretzel just sat down right next to me um Anyways, the reason for this is when you're lifting, you're mostly in the sagittal plane of motion, which is just moving straight up and down. And you're very, very tense because you're tightening up your muscles because you're working them. And very rarely are you in the lateral plane of motion where you're moving side to side like a lateral lunge. And even more rarely are you in the transversal plane where you are actually rotating as you're moving. Like if you were doing a lunge, but you actually rotated and then did a lunge. So those are movements that, yes, they do help break that rigidity. However, you're still tense in your muscles. You're still weighting the movements. It's important to be in a state of flow and to train your body to not be tensed up all the time. So along the lines of that, we transition to health habit number two. And Pretzel, perfect timing. She jumped off. Pretzel. Oh, 
Okay, now she's protesting, um, but we are in the Zen room. This is where we do stretching. Like she'll actually literally like do her puppy pose next to me sometimes while I'm stretching. It's really, really cute. But anyways, um, hold your stretches for at least two minutes. If you're stretching, that's great. But most of you, if you're not timing your stretches, including myself up prior to November 18th of last year, 2023, I was slacking a little bit on my stretching. Not to say that was always the case, but for the year of 2023 prior to November 18th, I was not holding my stretches for at least two minutes. So what I did, what was that change you ask? It's been about two months time. And in that time I have done 50, that is five zero minutes of stretching every single day. And how I do that is on the Pliability app. Every single day of the week, they have a stretching video where throughout the week, you'll target all the muscles that you need to target. However, what I'll do is I'll double it up. Like I'll do two stretching videos per day if they're the shorter length ones around 22 to 25 minutes. And then I'll do one of the longer length videos around 50 minutes if it is um, on, you know, the longer day. <laughs> Um, and you're holding your stretches for at least two to five minutes. You really, really, really need to hit that two minute mark to actually see visible change within your stretching, within your range of motion. So it's very important to actually hold your stretches and take them seriously. Kind of like your programming for a lifting program. <laughs> And that is a perfect segue into health habit number three. It is pretty obvious if you've watched some videos on my channel thus far because I compete in powerlifting. That is my primary fitness school aside from just general health and being healthy. Obviously that's on top of powerlifting, but lifting, you don't have to power lift, but I would recommend that you follow this general baseline template. So first you are starting with your compound movements. That is the squat, the bench, the deadlift. Next, you're moving into your hypertrophy, aka bodybuilding based movements like the lat pull down, the leg press, the hack squat, different that are still compound movements generally work, usually work more than one muscle group. Sometimes they're isolation. Um, at the end, you'll move into those bodybuilding exercises that are more, my, more isolating, like the bicep curl, the leg extension, the leg curl. But where a lot of people miss out on not just health, but overall strength gains is not training the stability aspects. Very important, like a lateral lunge or a reverse lunge, or if we're talking about shoulder health, like a face pull, something that's going to be more stability, not as much trying to get the hypertrophy gains, but trying to be stable and feeling good and healthy in your body. It's important to include all of those in your program. And then also with regards to rep ranges, you want to start with lower reps and build towards higher reps at the end of your workout. So for me, powerlifting, I'll have reps as low as one. For most people, I would say maybe not always doing sets of one. That's not always the smartest call, but starting with sets of five and then working downwards, upwards to the 15 rep range, maybe 20 if you're doing like a core exercise or something really isolating. I have a free strength training program, which is two lower body workouts, two upper body workouts on my channel. If you want to get started and you're not really sure what to do, I have all of the videos embedded into that, like videos of actually how to do the exercises. So I feel like I don't really need to talk about this one that much because I cover it in every single video, week to week to week. Obviously when you lift weights, you grow more muscle, you burn more calories throughout the day you look better. Who doesn't like that? And you feel strong. That is the most underrated thing about lifting. If you are not training those strength movements, if you're not pushing those exercises, especially those compound ones at the beginning of your workout, you definitely should be because it feels awesome to feel strong in your body. So that's all for this one. I feel like I could talk for hours about this, but let's hop into the next health habit. The best thing about getting home from work is changing into comfortable clothes. So now I'm going to walk my dog and I'll talk about the next health habit. Pretzel. All right. And health habit number four is the hardest for me to implement, if I'm being honest. And that is connection between your movements and the mind. And that is just allowing yourself to completely and utterly 
rush your body. Like, stay there still, clear your mind, not think about anything else but the present. Because especially when you're training hard, even if you're not powerlifting, even if you're cycling, swimming, bodybuilding, whatever it may be, you're training hard. You need to give your body a time to rest. So not everything about health is obviously based around movement, but specifically, I think that this ties into movement because it helps you be aware of the space that you exist in, the space that's around you. There's an acting exercise that I did. I did a lot of acting last year, but one of the warm-up exercises is just to close your eyes, be aware of the space that you exist in, and be aware of the space where you end. So I use this practice before I'm going to pull something heavy off the ground, especially in deadlifts, but even in other lifts as well. Another way of looking at that is just like meditation. This is very hard for me. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not the best at this, but it is a big goal for mine, big goal of mine for 2024. And then also I find journaling very helpful, but journaling specifically around what you're thankful for with your health. Like being thankful, I can move my body even though it's pouring rain right now, I'm still moving my body. I'm thankful that I am healthy and able to move my body. Just giving yourself gratitude for wherever you're at is really important for success in your goals and making sure that you take it easy on yourself. There's gonna be times where you go through injuries, times where maybe your motivation is low, but being grateful for what you did and not what you didn't do, not being so hard on yourself. So that is all for today's YouTube video. Thank you so much for watching. I plan to be consistent with posting every Wednesday in 2024, starting this week, obviously. But yeah, let me know if you have any suggestions for future videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.